as agreed, General Stom has been getting all the giants that are up in the upper level, uh, and a couple that like kind of retreated up that little ramp. Um, to like, they're packing up all the stuff, all the siege engines and all the things, and she's she's leaving the area. Um, the only exception to that is Togbad, the giant that was stuck at the bottom of the pit that had like his um like the tendons and his feet cut, which you guys fixed. You guys use a restoration spell on him and um, fixed because uh, it was represented as uh, dex drain. So, and he, uh, oh, there's Ron. Uh, Togbad basically agreed to follow you guys uh, because he's like so grateful that you guys, uh, you know, healed him and, and took out Chief Jubak, who he... He is surprisingly grateful. Yeah. So he he's like, I'll follow you anywhere. Like, <laughs> um, and you guys also equipped him with some of, um, like Chief Jubek stuff. Particularly, I think you guys gave him the. Uh, I don't know if you guys gave him the Morning Star. That's still in the loot sheet. But um, I remember, um, Rosalina pulled back out the uh, the armor and uh, shield. So he has that equipped right now. And I actually built a character sheet for him in in uh, Foundry with that stuff on him at the moment. But although I think, I think ah, uh, he can use the Morning Star. That's fine since it's big. Yeah. Okay. I think Secret might still have the the items in from grabbed from the loot sheet at some point, but. Whatever, I'll set that out if it ever comes up. Um, yeah, you can wield Jupiter's but, yeah. Morning Star. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that kind of that's kind of where we are. Like, uh, you guys got one of the Sahedron, uh, uh pieces as well. Yep. That was on. It was actually embedded in Chief Jubex Morning Star. Um. And I can't remember who ended up taking it, but. I think Silaric has it. But yeah, in any case, uh Yeah, I guess uh what do you guys want to do from, from here now? I know you guys probably uh, are down a lot of spells, but not me. <laughs> That's true. Um yeah, you guys got a little bit of intel about what's down the um where the dragon went. Um you think yeah. that uh well you you heard that the dragon was um was going down there to look for something. Maybe it's another piece of the Sahedron. It's possible. Um Storm didn't know exactly what it was because she said that like not only did uh, Cattle Crosta not ever tell them, but also Cattle Crosta was like extremely uh, violent before she disappeared down there. Um, sort of like Chief Jubek was with the um, and you realize of course that the shard, the shard, recent shard you got was the Shard of Wrath, so that kind of fits because mm -hmm. you know that if you don't have the Iron Stone, it have it curses you with like basically whatever vice it's tied to okay well uh i i guess we're probably gonna have to rest that's what everyone probably wants to do okay but i i don't like the the thought of like resting near the thing Yeah, um, Togbad will mention as well. He's like, yeah, like, when you sleep near this thing, it it gives you weird, weird dreams. Where was the last place we slept? Uh, out on the Versi and the Storval Plateau, probably. Probably, like maybe less than a mile away. We could probably go and 
you know, trek back out there to sleep. That way we don't have any weird dreams. Togbad says he would he'd like to get away from this place for a night at least. Alright. Alright, that's what we're doing, everybody. It's like I haven't had a proper night's sleep and I don't think I can count that high. Like holds up his fingers and Max like he's like trying to count. He's like, yeah, I don't I can't count that high. Oh, that's okay, Togbad. Okay, so um, it's like already, I'm pretty sure when you guys got here, it was kind of like middle or late in the day anyway, because you guys got here after, um, you know, traveling from where you rested previously. Um, but yeah, you guys managed to set out a little ways away and probably possibly even find the same spot that you camped at before or somewhere close by to it. Um. No sign of the uh, the moon man. The moon man? Or no, the uh, was a cloud. The cloud, cloud giant? giant? Yeah, that you guys talked to on the way. Well, you found, you ran into him a few days ago, and he, he definitely was not going this way. <laughs> um, all right. So... You guys set up like a uh, camp, and I'm assuming some watches and whatnot. Yeah, and okay. I'll I'll share with Togbad a bit of our our history here, adventuring. Okay. Uh, and what we've been doing. He he will listen to it um very intently, but yeah, it seems like a lot of the stuff's like going over his head, but like. Some of the stuff, like some of the details, like if you're, if you, you know, you're mentioning like danger and whatnot, he seems to like, he seems to like hang on to all the, the, the big climatic fights and things like that. Mm hmm. I ask him, uh, if he, if he adventures with us and we all make it out of here, do you have some place in mind where you'd you'd like to go, like back home or some there somewhere else? Why is it doing this? Script changes are disabled on this world. Yeah, I try to go to sleep. The rest button did that. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. <laughs> okay then. It looks like it still worked though. It reset all your, all your key pool and things. So I don't know what the why it's doing that though. Okay. Yeah, there's a button on your everyone's start uh, or on the summary page that says rest. That should let you overnight rest. Uh, answering your question though, Togbad, he, he kind of like shrugs and he says like, I don't know. I, I got kicked out of the tribe by Chief Jubek. So I guess I don't have a home anymore. Hmm. Well, you know, uh, back where we're from Magnamar, it's a pretty big city. I think even big enough for someone like you. Hmm. I've never been there before, but maybe. <laughs> it's like to imagine Tog Bad in Magnamar. Like, yeah. I mean, the bridge is definitely big enough for him. The broken yeah. bridge. <laughs> But yeah, and Togbad thinks about it a bit, and he says, "Maybe, maybe I'll go to Magnamar." 
meet nice lady that gave you all those uh, things. Yeah. You can help us around uh, the city. He seems like pretty sold on the day. He's like, yeah, that sounds great. I'll do that. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, you guys probably, like I said, set up some watches and whatnot, but um, nothing really happens uh, during the night. You guys have relatively normal dreams, probably. And uh, everyone, everyone's uh, well rested. So yeah, you can, you can all do the... All right, back to back to Giltspur. Yeah, it's weird. It, when the rest of you guys hit it, it didn't do it. So it's just something something about with Silric Sheet, when you hit the rest button, it gives you like three error messages, and I don't know why. <laughs> odd. That is yeah. odd. Huh. Okay, well, it looks like it, everything worked fine. It just... I don't know. <laughs> All right, so you guys head back towards uh, to towards Guildspur the next Giltspur. day. Then okay, um, so yeah, you get there this time. It's like since all the giants have left, it's uh, it's very quiet there. Um, in fact, you notice as well that there's like. Yeah, you know, there's not really much wildlife in there either. So like it's and since yeah, basically at this point now there's just basically nothing there. All they they took all the mammoths away too and everything. Um, mm -hmm. so um, even the dead ones. Uh, they yeah they probably did because they were gonna they were like oh food, <laughs> so yeah they packed up they packed up the dead ones to use as like meat. It's like the main reason they, they keep the mammoths. In fact, Togbad would probably tell you mammoth is like his favorite thing to eat. I've never tried it myself. Togbad insists. He's like, you, you need to try it sometime. It's so good. Well, we saw one that was uh, roasting before our eyes. I've, you know, the yeah, one that roast, was on fire. Roast mammoth is the best. Yeah, the one that, although they did tar it before they light it on fire, which might have yeah. ruined some of the meat. Uh, okay, so as we go to Giltspur, I tell Togbad that typically I go first and check for danger. Uh, I would like him to stay in the back and protect us. Okay, Togbad, protect. Um, yeah, and he'll do that then. Which I need to pull this into. I haven't set up with like a random club, but let's pull. I think I can just drag and drop, maybe. I can't. I'm not sure how to add things on an NPC. I can't hit the. I don't have the loot button. Hmm. Okay. Well, whatever. I'll work that later. Um. Okay. So yeah, the uh, you guys find the let's see here. I need to reveal a little bit more on the map because um, the spot that goes further down, Togbad's familiar with it. He know actually knows where it is. It's um, it's over. I don't know if you guys can see where I'm pointing, but it's over here. There's this door over there. We the can see point. Yeah, so there's a there's a door over there and it's blocked by a bunch of boulders, but um Togbad is easily able to just kind of move them out of the way. All right. Um but 
probably Silric could move them as well. He could kick them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when you open that up, there is this uh, giant pit. On the side of the door. And, uh, yeah, so Togbed says, like, you can't, you can't see the bottom, but it's like a mist down there. But, uh, when we went down there, there were these giant scorpion things. They're really scary. Scorpions and crystals? Uh, no, just scorpions. Oh. Scary scorpions. He nods. They have, like, skulls on them. Wait, they have skulls? He nods. Yes. Like... Like they're wearing skulls or something or what? Yeah, like something like that. Sounds very strange. Does anybody have any idea of what he's talking about? Anybody can, I guess, roll a knowledge arcana? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, you're not sure. What are we doing? We're, we're knowledgeing for what? Knowledge Arcana, see if anybody knows what Togbad's describing. He's describing <laughs> like giant scorpions with skulls. I will explain everything to you. Um. That might be enough. I'm the most intelligent rat ever! <laughs> Okay, so Rosalina thinks this description of like the large uh scorpions with um with you know skulls on them as well. Um you guys heard a little bit about this from uh from General Stom, I think, as well when you asked. But from what you've heard, Rosalina, you think that they're he's talking about an old uh, Thessalonian construct that's been encountered in other Thessalonian runes before, called a Skull Ripper. Oh, okay. Um, and a Skull Ripper, they have when he's talking about them being scary, they do have like this aura that can cause people to run away, um, and they also if they grapple someone, what they will try to do is they'll try to pin it and then they will attempt to behead the victim with its claws. So getting grappled by these um, for uh, consecutive turns is very dangerous because um, yeah, I mean, it's it, the only way it can behead you is if it reduces you to zero hit points, basically. But it gets like this huge uh, damage bonus if it pins you. Like it has a uh, constrict but it has like uh if it pins you it gets like super constrict basically it has like a spend from its behead ability um it also has a poison on it and like i said the 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 aura the fear aura if you recognize someone on the on the like one of the skulls or that it has on its uh that it that it collects basically because once it once it cuts the behead someone it keeps the skull around they get a penalty on the will save. On oh, that's row. cute. So, all right. So we're we're level thirteen by now. Would we we must have some kind of protection against fear, right? Does anybody mm -hmm. have any kind of buff or thing they can put on us? Um, not prepared.
Um, don't we? Didn't we get another ring of a uh, spell knowledge or what it's, or what it's called? Spell storing. Yeah, somebody yeah, got storing. it. Can't, can't, can't you put one of those spells into that and then cast it from there? Uh, I mean, yeah, but. Yeah, I don't have remove fear, but um, yeah, Pilbo has it. I don't have it. Yeah, but you're. Or, a I don't have the ring. Is what I meant. Oh, oh yeah, I think I think Jace has the ring. At any rate, uh, we should try to somehow protect ourselves against fear if we know that's waiting for us. Um, see enough. I have a communal fear. Um, I have Calm Emotions, but that's only per round, or a round spell, and that only suppresses it. Still useful. Um... Oh, yeah. One kind of interesting uh, detail as well, that... The fog that I mentioned as well mm -hmm. is uh, blue green. Is that's what? Oh, it's a very unnatural looking fog. And how far away from the fog are we? Uh, you guys are actually twenty five feet above the fog, and then below that. I asked the magic musers, "Can you identify anything about that fog? Is it magical at all?" That one, either anybody who has knowledge arcana, if they look at it, can roll that for this as well. Oh, I can add remove fear, but I don't see any other group spell. I think remove fear works on multiple people. I rolled two ones in a row, guys. Congratulate me. <laughs> Proud of you. Yeah. Remove fear is one creature plus one additional per four levels. Uh, I have to close out the window, so oh, one second. Um, Pillbo rolled a net 20, though. That's pretty good. Okay, okay. Then take that, because um, I'm broken, <laughs> All right. apparently. Right. Pillbo, uh, you recognize that this, um, this fog is the manifestation of a spell uh, mage's private sanctum, basically. So what that means is that if you entered this fog, you think that, well, uh, anyone looking on the outside only sees a foggy mass that dark vision cannot, and no sounds can penetrate. Uh, also, you know that anyone within it is, uh, if you try to use divination spells, it cannot perceive anything within the area. Um, those within are also immune to detect thoughts, um, prevent speech between those inside and those outside because it blocks sounds, uh, and then things like sending a message. Uh, well, those those can work, and so can telepathic communication, but that's um, that's about it. Yeah, the main thing is it's a uh, anti divination effect.
but you do know if you had like you could use like something like uh all right sorry i can can you link it or just resay it uh i could probably link to it on the srd for you as well but yeah it's it's a manifestation of mage's private sanctum okay manifestation of mage's private sanctum And is it moving towards us, or is it just sitting there? Just sitting there, 25 feet down the pit. Oh, okay. Um, Basically, we gotta jump down there. I mean, you don't have to jump, but... <laughs> I don't see a ladder. I'll push you down. I'll land on my feet. I'm like a cat. <laughs> Not no, Tog bad. He's gonna land like a rock. Um. So how 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 far down is it? About the fog is twenty five feet down, but you don't know what's on the other side of the fog. Like it. So could be, can it could I be a further drop after that? I'm I'm going to wield my rod of enemy detection. Do I detect? Um, can I use that to detect if there's an enemy in the fog? No, you know specifically that the fog's going to block it because the rod works off of divination magic, and the the fog blocks all divination magic. Oh, I see that right there. Okay. Dang. Yes, you can use your rod. Yes, you know that it won't work. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. No, I kind of want to drop something down into it first to see like, Do it. how far down. Sure. Uh, Togbad um, offers you a rock. It's uh, okay. it's a boulder though. It's like <laughs> as big as you are. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't grab that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my bad, I forget. He he starts to put it uh back into his pack or into his little bag that he's got. What's in it? Yeah, he's a giant. They carry around boulders. Well, we can have Togbad just toss a boulder down there. Uh, what? Okay. Uh, he he pulls it back out and uh, drops it down into the mist. But it disappears into the mist and uh, you don't hear anything. Hmm. Although Pilbo isn't mm. really surprised because he knows that the fog blocks sound too. Oh, okay. Well then, but you, it does tell you a little bit of information because the boulder's so big. If the floor was right below the mist, it probably would have like poked out of it or something. And it doesn't do that, so there's definitely a little bit of a, at least a little bit of a drop below the fog too. Uh, Talk battle tell right. you like, as well. He's like, there's, yeah, it's like, I think just about as deep past the fog too. It, it's really far down. I mean, I can either just tie a rope to one of his other boulders or oh like use like a python or something and wedge it into the or boulder or I can just air walk us yeah air walk would do it yeah I'll just air walk the party because it's going to last for okay. 13 130 minutes split right. among the recipients so you How many people minutes. we got here? Seven? Uh, six. So you have 20 You get about, you get about minutes, 20 minutes basically. plus some change. That'll be good. And did you say that you had uh, remove fear? Um, I can prepare it, but I would have to... We can wait 15 the, minutes for you to prepare it. Take the time to do that. I mean, if there, if we know there's an enemy, you know, waiting I, past that thing that uses fear, then we might as well have it. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I'll do that after I add remove fear. All right. Okay. Then once uh, Pilbo has that prepared, and he gives us um, 
air walk. I guess we'll all just go down, right? All at once. Okay, I was just testing to make sure that the one creature per four levels. Stars configured correctly. One, two, Looks like it is. Three. So I can remove here from four people at a time. Yeah. Also, I think if you put it up ahead of time, it gives a bonus. But um, you can either use it proactively to just give a bonus, or use it to suppress something when you cast it. Yeah, you can use it reactively to suppress fear as well. Okay. Um, so you guys decide to use Airwalk to go down there? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, do you guys all go through the mists like at the same time or? Yeah. Okay. So I'll be pulling you guys onto a map here in a second then. Um, and as you guys are going down, you do notice it looks like it. There's like cracks and lots of things that look, like Togbad even tells you he's like we climbed we climbed up and down there when we did it, but this this is a lot easier. Hmm. Yep, it sure is. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, as you guys uh, emerge from the mist, you see a large uh, circular chamber that rises up to a height of 60 feet, and you guys are at the top. So, um, a dome like room fill, or a dome like room with walls that may have once been smooth but are now riddled with cracks and fissures. 20 foot high curving stone shelves fill the room, leaving a circular area open in the center. Uh, iron double doors lead out of the room in the four cardinal directions. Uh, splashes and splatters of blood mar the floor here and there, and two huge leathery mounds lie heaped in the middle of the room. You also see, um, when you guys get in here, um, you see that they're looks to be like you kind of see it like that at first but then as like a moment later it kind of like changes on you uh you now notice it's like filled with a bunch of like a bunch of people milling about uh uh you see like people hack can only be wizards because some of them just like fly up to grab stuff from these these 20 foot tall shelves like they just fly up and grab books from the top of it um uh but then suddenly the dozens of people in this library all stop and stare at you like they and uh you notice as well that uh each of like some of these they have like your own faces on them uh, oh no! But then the image disappears, and you just see the um, the ruined library that was there before. But I need everybody to roll a will save. More like won't save. It's okay, Pluto. I got my ones out already. Okay. Right. Somebody didn't. <laughs> Yes, all my ones are gone for the rest of the game. Okay, well, fortunately, this isn't too bad. This is just uh, those of you that rolled ones are just shaken for um, for several minutes. Um, although you guys did prepare something for that, so. <laughs> yeah, we could remove it. Uh, Not right now, though. I think really. Oh, I got a roll for Togbad as well. He might. He might fail this as well. Let's. Uh, 
Let's see. He doesn't have a great will save. Oh, no, he's fine. Uh, so everybody that rolled a one, the only people that failed, you guys are shaken for, uh, for like 10 minutes. Um, but you also notice as well that there are these, uh, giant scorpion like constructs as well. And they notice you as well. Oh, they're just here. They're just to here. Yeah. Um, so everybody can roll initiative as well. Let me, okay. oh, not yet. I got to hit the button. Okay. Now everybody can roll initiative. It's time for the whatchamacallit. Is there it is there it is. I just need Jace, I think. Oh, uh, button. And you guys can notice, you might notice that all, all your tokens have a 50 feet on there, so I have you guys as being 50 feet in the air. Okay. That's neat. All right. Why does Abrellis not have it? Probably because the number's underneath Pilbo's token. But it's not hidden for Silveric. Oh, I don't know then. If I right click on the token, it says 50 feet. So, oh, there. No. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, you guys didn't all heal up either, did you? Oh, no. If you guys want to retroactively, like, spend uh, some charges of cure wands and whatnot, uh, um, go ahead. Because, yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys would have done that. See how I do this. Can I just go one, two, four? Remember, you'll have to hit the five. button to actually apply the healing, though. Yeah, and I have to select my token, too. Yeah. Click the nine, click the nine. All right, that's good. So, I guess Jace and Silverick, do they want any? Um, I have a potion. I don't know, I I'm kind of low ish. I'm down 37. Two, five. There, take those four. Uh, nineteen. Okay, thank you. Grip changes are disabled. It's something to do with silver sheet. I think I don't know. I'm broken. I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> Huh, okay. I'll look into it. Uh, we'll just have to deal with it, I think, for today, but <laughs> I'll look into it, so hopefully I won't do that next time. I might just have to, like, clone your sheet or something and just see if that if that fixes it. It looks like it healed you, though, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that, because everything's working, <laughs> but it just gives us error messages. All right. Uh, so it looks like we're good. I'm going to go ahead and hit the begin combat on here. So, uh, Rosalina, you can go first. So these are, you know, these are constructs they are on the ground right now. Um, yeah. You're out of range of their furora right now, so you don't need to worry about that. But normally that furora triggers on their turn. So just something to keep in mind if you know, if you get close to them. Uh, I will... I can't remember how this works. Does it give me the radius thingy? How do I get that? Damn it. Uh, you can do it from tar pointers. So under measurement controls. Yeah, but I think... And it's circle template. Oh, here, this thingy. Also, depending on what spell you're casting, sometimes it'll pull up a targeting thing automatically. Yeah, it's not, apparently. Or Yeah, I don't know if every spell's configured. Because, like, the spells are added into the 
um, library by users, so sometimes they're not configured the same. Can I hit them both? Ugh. I don't know if I can hit them both. They might be spaced out too far at the moment. Yeah, I'll just glitter dust that one then. Okay. Darn. Uh, it will roll a will save. Well, it failed, so... Uh, it is blind now, then. Okay. Uh, do you do anything else? Take that as a no. Alright. Um... No. Silric. Um, I'll spring attack for now. Okay, you have like 90 move speed or something, I think. So, I think even being 50 feet up, you can uh, dip down, probably hit him and still move back uh, at least part of the way. As long as I'm not directly next to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that will hit and do some. Um, so let's see. Some of the damage gets blocked, but most of it goes through. All right, and then I don't know if you'll be able to get back 50 feet in the air. So let's see here. You would have had to move down 50 feet. Oops. So it's like 70 feet. So you could be like maybe 20 feet in the air, I'd say. So we'll adjust that if that's fine with you, unless you want to stay on the ground. That's fine. 20 okay. feet's good. Okay. Um, all right. Umbrellas. Hmm. So I could, I could get down to it pretty easily, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, you're 50 feet in the air, but. For you, it might be a double move. You don't have, like, 90 move speed like Celeric, but... I couldn't charge it. You could charge it, too. And that you know that one over there is blind at the moment. I guess we're charging. All right. Get back there. Right there. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Under my buffs. Oh, no, I don't need a buff for this. Attack it with my mithril short sword. Okay. Um believe that will hit and uh just like Solaric notice not all your damage goes through but um most of it does okay it seems like it has a little bit of dr and if i can i will debilitate it you can yep and give it minus attack and minus ac And it'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, that brings up Jace. Okay. Who is probably perfectly happy with a uh, 50-foot tall shaft. Yeah. <laughs> that you're so above. The, the scorpions are at the bottom? Yes, they're on the floor. Have we done any knowledges? I don't see any. Uh, I mean, other than the one that uh, that oh, the earlier Rosalina arcane. already did, just off the description. But you can roll another one if you'd like. Sure. Okay. Uh, so you know the same stuff as um, what Rosalina knows, but do you have any questions that you'd like answered? Like, I can give you a little bit more information if there's something you want to know about them. Um, do we know any DR stuff? Okay, no, you don't. Um, you've kind of seen the effects of our, our Silric and Umbrellas did, but you know that they have DR5 adamantine. Oh, okay, okay. I'm definitely going to uh, Arcane Pool enhance my bow. Okay. How do I do that? I, I have to remember how to do this. Uh, so that goes down one. Is it under buffs? Yes. Okay, good. It's on. And then I will attack uh the one that a Brawless attacked, I guess. Okay. And button, button. And definitely not in point blank range. And I'll, I'll do. Do I do I know if they're like resistant to acid or cold? Um, you don't think they are. Okay, I'll just do acid splash. Actually, no, you think they're resistant to cold. Sorry. Okay, you're too, I'll do acid splash. Okay, are you too far away for acid splash? Uh, aren't we high enough level? What are we? You're level 13, so... Uh, that's... 25 plus... How much? 25. 12 times... So six... Is it 5 feet per 2 levels? Yeah, it's 5 feet per 2 levels. So it'd be... 55 feet? I guess as long as you 5 foot step, like, down, you're probably fine if you go to 45 elevation. I cannot do math right now. Wait. 5, 10. So 5 times 6 is 30. 55 feet. Okay, that's what you said. I, I'll 5 foot step. Okay. What What am I on? Are we we're air walking? You're air walking, yeah. Okay. You're, you're on the air. Okay. And I, I do the attacks and I rolled a 1 again. Nice. Even though I said no more 1s. Uh, You still hit with, let's see, <laughs> Uh, some of those. Not good. <laughs> Let's see here. We got well, their AC's a little lower because of debilitating strike, so um, from bewildered, and also they're blind, so they're flat-footed as well. Um, but I think still only one of those arrows actually hits. <laughs> so. But uh, you have it enhanced so to the plus four, um, so it counts as adamantium. So you got that going for you. So all the, all your damage goes through. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I guess that brings up the blind skull ripper's turn. Uh, it is going to swing at. Um, where it got hit from Umbrellus, but it is blind, so it's probably... And has debilitating strike. So it has the debilitating strike automatically configured into this attack roll, but it doesn't have the increased penalty versus you. So this is actually going to be actually lower than it. It's minus two lower. So it gives you a minus uh, four when attacking you. Okay. So... There'd be a 20 and a 34 then. So I'm guessing the 34 might have a chance to hit, right? Dang. A 34? Yeah. 
the 34 uh, actually yeah does hit which is man it's a lot because my ac is 32 right now okay uh looks like it hit so it's gonna do that 15 damage if it's blind, doesn't it need to roll twice? Or doesn't it need to roll for concealment? I just did that. That was a 74. Oh, okay. Um, so it is going to attempt to grab you as well, then. Let me put that damage on you. Did that work? Did not. There we go. Now it worked. Uh, so let's see here. It's going to attempt to do a grab as well no oh. <laughs> context notes plus 26 grapple uh good lord so yeah i think it i think it succeeded its grapple check uh does it need a concealment check uh, i think it i think i'm not sure i think it does because it's just an it is another attack roll so we'll We'll go with that. Uh, it still made that though, unfortunately. Okay. So you got it's got you grappled. Um, and then it has constrict, which I don't think is built into this sheet. I do think it just has it as a note or something. Two D six plus nine. So it constricts you for 15 damage as well. <clears throat> okay. And then it is going to attempt one last thing. It's going to attempt to sting you as well. Uh, but that one misses. Okay, that's its turn. Uh, Pilbo. Um... Oh, do you guys have the shaken on Pilbo and Abrellis, by the way? Or do I need to do I need to go do that? Yeah, let me give that on buff. No, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't have shaken. that on me. Okay. There, I think it was a little frightened. Buff. Frightened will work as well. Yeah, it's the same debuff to your stats, so. Alright, so what does Pilbo do? Um, alright, so what I'm going to try... Does this... Uh, did we knowledge this guy? Yeah. He's been knowledge uh, twice, in fact. All right. I'm trying to find my fucking. Trying to find my hero web tab. All right, I'm going to. Is he immune to? Bu, 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 bu. The construct. So confusion. That's so yes, he would. It's immune to mind affecting because it's a construct. Okay, never mind then. I wonder if they're uh, notes. Oh, sorry. Blessing of fervor of the party. Uh, are people in range? Because keep in mind that is, is it plus is it thirty feet? No diff. Is that the limit? I don't know, but I'm just just curious because I know we Abrellis. may not need that for this fight. Abrellis though. is mm. down ten feet above in the air, while you, uh, Rosalina and Jace are like about fifteen. Mm, feet in the okay, air, so. I'm going to hold it then. I don't. I don't want to fucking. Miss someone. Oh yeah, I'll, talk I'll just... two feet in the air. I don't know what I want to do here. Combat tracker. No, I'm the last one. 
No, Togpad hasn't gone yet. No, he's just not on the tracker. I guess you just don't have a token for him. Hmm? He's on the tracker, or he should be. Oh, is Maybe that the hill giant? giant? Yeah. Oh, okay. That oh, yeah, makes, it says that's who. Oh. Yeah, it should say Togbat. Okay, that that makes more sense for what I was seeing. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, I don't want a blessing of Verber for that. Oh, that's weird. I have his name listed as Togbat in the... Maybe it's because it's not listed as Togbat in the... Yeah, the token has a different name than the character sheet. That's funny. Okay. Yo, oh, you might have to link the token to the character sheet. That's already taken care of. Oh, I, okay. That part I did. I already did. My spells are separated out between freaking tabs. Uh, I'm just... I'm going to move to the... Uh, how far can I go? 40... Is that right? Maximum up or down is 45 degrees and equal to half the air walker's normal speed. My normal speed is 30, 60, so I can go 30 feet at a 45 degree angle. Prig. So if I'm above the creature, so say Abrellis is down on the ground, and mm -hmm. I'm above the creature over here at, like, 30 feet, is that still, con or, like, 20 feet, is that still considered a flank? Uh, <laughs> no. I don't think so. Abrellis would have to be underneath the creature for a flank. Mm, okay. I'm just going to start... Start moving down. Start moving down. Okay. Whatever 30 feet is at a 45 degree angle. Okay. I'll just say 25 feet. Like, it's probably close enough. You just kind of circle around. I don't around. know where that puts me. Well, you could, you could do it in like a circle and end up at the same spot if you want. Except 25 feet huh? down. Like, you could... 45 degree angle and like a spiral. No, I I, I want to go somewhere like. Oh, okay. I can't ping. I want to go over here somewhere. Okay, that's fine. Like at an angle. Yeah, you can probably do that. That'll put you right above the bookshelves, because the bookshelves are these spiral bookshelves. The orange things are 20 feet tall. So. All right, is that where you want to be then? Uh, if that's as far as I can move, yeah. I don't, okay. I don't know. Uh, this skull ripper over here. Uh, let's see how much move speed does he have? He can go. Can he get to Pilbo? That's the question. His move, his land speed, same as his move speed. So he can just climb up these. Yeah, he. So he's gonna. What he's gonna do? He's gonna come up here. And he's gonna climb up the bookshelf. So now he's 20 feet up. And he's going to uh, do a single uh, claw attack at Pilbo. Okay. All right, so 31. Uh, does that hit Pilbo, Pilbo? Wait, that one doesn't have any no. penalties? No, this one doesn't. It hasn't been hit by anything. So wait, hold on. That has a plus 20 to hit. So why did the other one have a plus 20 to hit? It's blind. Mm, maybe it didn't put the penalty in like it's supposed to then. Oh. I just, I, let me see what's going on here. Because I can click on it and it'll break it down. It says minus two on there, but what does this one say? Seven plus twenty, base attack bonus fifteen, strength six. Okay, if we go to the other one, oh, you know what it is? 
because one of them I put the advanced template on correctly, and this one's supposed to have it as well, but it doesn't. So that's that's what's going on. The first one was correct. This one's actually incorrect. So this should be this should be too higher. Let me fix that. I don't actually remember how to how I where I got it from. Whatever. I'm just gonna go. It's gonna go with this. So that should be that should actually be too higher. Um. So, the thirty three does a thirty three hit pill though. What? A thirty three would be what that attack actually. No. Actually, okay, it still misses. Okay. Uh. All right. Then that's it for its turn. Uh, because it had to move, so it only gets one attack. Uh, Togbad is going to, he's going to charge the one that's attacking Pilbo. Going to try to help his new friends. Um, so he's going to do a single power attack. Uh, but he misses. Okay. Round two, uh, Rosalina. Um, well, the one grappling Umbrellas, is it hurt? Yes. It's like, it's taken, uh, that's the one that everyone's attacked, so Jace, Jace, uh, the Silk and Umbrellas all hit it. So it looks like it's pretty badly damaged, but. Uh, then I'll go ahead and retribution it. Uh, okay. DC 23. Is that a will save? Uh, yes. Okay, it fails. Okay, it'll just take returned half damage, and its DR does not um, Yeah, it doesn't produce. block that. Okay. Um, is there a buff I can put on it? I'll just have to try to remember that it has retribution hex on it. I guess I could put like a little R or something. I don't know. Also, I would have flown down close enough to do that. Uh, what is this doing? <laughs> Why does it put new text in there when I'm just trying to draw a line? You seen that? Um, do you have your... <laughs> oh, do you have the pencil tool open? Yeah, I opened the pencil tool and I went to like the, the draw freehand and every time I try to draw it puts text. It says new text. Oh, weird. And I don't know why it's doing that. That's draw funny. Draw polygon maybe instead? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I could just do an actual text, I suppose. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, we know, know it's we know it has it. I don't because... know why it's doing that. We'll just have to remember though. Okay. Uh so it has retribution on it now. Um do you do anything else? Oh you moved. Okay. Uh yeah. Storic. No, the Brellus grappled, right? Abrellus is I grappled, am. yeah. And there's also this uh this guy um that tried to attack Pilbo. He's within your reach as well. Whoops. So keep that in mind. Like if you do a flying kick, well, the one to, uh, like to try to go help Abrellus, the one on the left might attack you. But although you do have mobility for that, just for that situation, so. And I will attempt flying kick. <laughs> On the one for Aurelis. Okay. Uh, so this one will try to do an attack on you then. How dare you? It's going to try to do a sting on you. 
Uh, so 33. So whatever your AC says on your sheet with plus four, because the mobility is not going to be factored into it by default. And my AC is 24. Is that... That's supposed to go down. Is that correct? It was 31, I think, last time. Um, what are we missing in here? I think it's missing your uh, monk stuff. It's missing like your wisdom bonus and you said 31 was what it would have been before though? Yeah, it was 31 I believe. Okay. Uh, with mobility I'd put up to 35 so the 33 would just miss. We'll have to fix that. I think my you, sheet's I broken think today. Sheet's broken, yeah. So I'll have to <laughs> I'll have to look into it and try to figure out what's going on with that. Bang. I might just have to like clone it and. All right. Uh, hopefully this is these numbers are correct. I don't like trust anything on your sheet now. <laughs> <laughs> Though let's see, strength base attack plus thirteen, power attack minus four, shard of greed one, enhancement bonus three. That all looks correct. Okay. Uh, so let's see. This one is blind at the moment, so its AC is lowered. But I think that twenty. It technically still has my debilitating strike on it. Oh, it also has grapple, and I don't have a um. I don't have the debuff on it for grappled. So let me throw that on it because that should lower its AC as well. Okay, so that'll uh, that actually will make those threes which would otherwise miss because it's grappling will actually cause it to hit. Um, so let's see here. Put those two in. Okay, it's not quite down from that. Um, but then the 31 will hit as well. Okay, so you actually take it down with the fir those first three attacks. Nice. Okay. Um, all right. I guess I'll move on to Abrellis' turn then. It's still up? No, it's not. You're no longer grappled. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, is this one grappling Pilbo? Nope. It tried to, it tried to, but it missed. Hmm. Does it have combat reflexes, though? Good question. I'm going to try and move 30 feet here into a flank. And I'm going to acrobatics. Okay. I'll use my my uh, my rogue talent to roll twice to take the better result. Okay. I have to go up a little bit too to go above the bookshelf there. Okay, so thirty-two is the high your high number here. Um, it is going to attempt attack or uh, take an attack opportunity on you. It does. It does have combat reflexes. Ooh. So it is going to attempt to sting you. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, so it misses? Yeah. That was a low roll, luckily. I almost wonder if it's acrobatics where it has that contextual, like, says plus 26, if they're just giving what, what its total versus grapple for grappling is. <laughs> I think that might Possibly. be what it's doing. It doesn't make sense for it to have a plus 24 or whatever CMB and then plus 26 grap like, on top of that for grapple. Like, that seems absurd. <laughs> All right, so move over here. Okay. And attack it. Yep. And you have a flank. With a flank. Oh, that's a one. Darn. 
Well, it's my turn then. Okay. Um. All right, Jace. Okay. Um. I'm just gonna shoot Mr. Scorpion. Okay. Seems like a uh, good idea. There's no like uh, I can see fine, right? Yeah. No cover. You're up high enough that you can. Okay. Uh, Noble's not in your way. But and he's standing on top of the bookshelf. Uh, technically, if I. No, I'm still out of thirty feet. Okay, no point blank. It's fine. Acid splash is the play. Okay, so we got. This one's AC hasn't been debuffed by debilitating striker, all the other stuff. Yeah. So. 26 will actually miss, but the 30 will hit. Yeah, well. The other 30 will hit, and the 29 will hit. Okay, so it's got some damage on it. My damage is consistent, at least. 20, 21, 22, the ones that miss 20 and 19. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Uh, this one's defeated. Pilbo? I am flanking. Yes. Ish. You are okay. flanking. Now I can turn that back on. Um. Am I still shaken? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna punch with Cestus. Okay. Actually, I've been forgetting about these guys' aura. <laughs> But whatever. I'll just say he hasn't activated yet, and I'll have him turn it on next so, round. My first full round ever. <laughs> Alright. Uh, unfortunately, both those attacks are going to miss, though. Is it doing it correctly? It looks like it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Alright. Uh, is that it? Yeah. All right, uh, the Skull Ripper. It is going to scurry on over five feet, and it's going to attack Togbad. The most big and threatening, because since you guys haven't actually hit it yet, Jace did, but can't reach Jace. Thank but goodness. It's going to attack Togbad. Yay! Yeah, no, this this fight's really good for me. I like being safe. Oof, Togbad takes some damage. I have Celestial Armor. I could fly once a day, too. And he's also going to do a Stinger attack. Probably do the Stinger first, honestly. The Stinger actually misses. Um, and he's going to also attempt to... Do a garple. Um, I don't know that that's going to be enough to grab on. Uh, no, actually, it will. So he grabs Togbad and constricts him. For minimum damage. All right. Uh, Togbad is not pleased about being grabbed. Um, oh, he's going to turn his R on. So Togbad's going to roll versus that. Um, fortunately for Togbad, it actually doesn't matter too much for him if he fails this because he's actually grappled. Uh, and he does fail. So he's he is frightened. However, he's also grappled, so he can't run away. So instead, he is going to um, he's actually going to just attack. Um, but I think he misses all of his attacks. So okay. Um, 
All right, Rosalina. Uh... You're far enough away. You don't have to worry about the aura. Yeah, I'm just going to retribution the... Uh... Okay. The thing. Retribution on this guy now. 23. Uh, fails. Yay. He does have uh, SR. Does this does SR apply to this? Is this considered spell-like? Or is it supernatural? Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, so he's got retribution on him. Um, Silric. I'm going to do a defensive spin. No, the one above you is dead already. Oh. So you'll probably have to use Flying Kick if you want to do a full round. Alright, yeah. I'll Flying Kick. Okay. Using the air walk. And it's grappling right now, so don't have to worry about attack opportunities either. Okay. I think these are all going to miss, unfortunately. Oh, you know what? It's, uh... Use the unarmed strike instead of the flurry button, so it didn't do all your attacks. Oh, oops, I'm in the wrong tab. <laughs> Sorry. That's all good. Uh, the only thing it's missing is the first two flurry attacks, so you have two more... If you just do two single attacks, it'll it'll do it. Um, although these rolls should be three higher, so one of those is going to hit, because it's not including your enhancement bonus on this one, so. Um, so you actually have three hits in total. So one more hit? Uh, one of the ones you rolled earlier, even though it said 20, was actually a 23, so that one hit. And then your 32 and 33 would hit. Yes. All right, so it is still up at the moment, um, but not by much. Uh, Abrellis. Um, let's see. So apparently we can blind this thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to try a dirty trick to blind it, and I'll, I'll make this my, my quick dirty trick as my first iterative. Okay. Hey, look at that. Got him. He's blind. I'm going to blind it for this many rounds. For two rounds. Yep, plus by amount based on how much you beat its CMD by, so. Mm -hmm. And then I'll use my my iterative t as my actual attack. Okay. Ooh, an 18. Okay, that'll hit. Um, and that's, uh, even with the DR, that's enough to finish this thing off. Got him. So we are out of combat. Nice. All right. Script changes are disabled. Are there still wizards flying around? No, that that was just momentarily. Did it oh, okay. fly everyone? Like a vision of sorts. Yeah, it was like a vision. It gave me that script error thing. I think it still gave you guys the XP though, so I don't know what is causing that. Okay. Well. 
mystery for the future. I'll have to try to figure that out. All right, so Togbad calms down after that thing's killed. The fear from that, from its aura only. Oh, I forgot to roll that. I said I was going to roll it, and then I didn't do it <laughs> to make you guys roll it. Whatever. It's a very low DC. I think it's very unlikely you guys would have failed versus the uh, versus that aura. And once you succeed on one save, you're immune to it. But yeah, Togbad kind of moves away after you, after that thing gets dropped and the grapple clears. He like scurries over the corner and he looks like he's like oh, breathing heavily, you know, like trying to calm himself down. Um, but yeah, this room does look like it is a library. But yeah, it looks like it's in very sorry shape. Like the um, uh, like there's you think that like for example the the so the spherical walls used to be smooth, but now there's cracks and fissures in it all up and down, which makes it actually would make it actually a lot easier to climb if you had to. So if like, you didn't have air walk, you'd think you probably could get out fairly easily as long as you're a decent climber. All right. Um, Are any books intact? Uh, go ahead and roll a perception. Mm. And look for some books. Uh... Where the fuck? I guess that's in the skill page. You don't think you see any um any books that are still like intact. Okay. Um you think oh. that maybe like you think you maybe see one at first but you pull it out and it kind of just like falls apart. Um, then I'll go ahead and just Detect magic around the room, then. Okay. Um, well, you do detect some magic uh, on some of the shelves. And when you follow it over to them, you find... Uh, you find what look like some sturdy uh, metal plates that look like they have uh, inscriptions on them. Okay, like magical inscriptions? Mm -hmm. uh, I think these might be scrolls, basically, but they're on metal plates instead of a normal scroll. Um, I'll read magic to determine what they are. Okay. Um, so these scrolls are... Uh, ice Storm, Wall of Ice, uh, Cone of Cold, I'm sensing a theme here. Um, and polar ray. Ooh. Um, are also, they big the, or? Uh, they're not too big. They're pretty. They're pretty small. But the the metal that they're on. Oh yeah, I was gonna put it on there for you as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> the plates that they're on are made out of um, are made out of sicotite. Um, and you think, which is like a metal that either is hot or cold, and this variant of it is based on the polarity of it, basically. And this one, these are attuned to cold. So like, That's so you, sick. If you used them as an improvised weapon, for example, and smacked someone with it, they would take one cold damage. And you can like feel, the, when, you, oh. when you touch them, you can feel like there's like a chill on them. Do I take cold damage holding them? No, not not just holding them, but you can definitely feel it. Like it's there it's like holding uh it's like holding like a thermos with uh something frozen in it for example so they're plates that are cool sick and tight like condi condensate condensation is on it is on these. so i can put these in my bag yeah um and you you think that these these scrolls will have an additional value besides just being scrolls you think even if you use them up and the inscription disappear the the plates of metal themselves would actually have some Reuse value. the plates for more scrolls or just sell the plates? Yeah, we could sell them, but yeah. Okay. Um, I'll grab those. Are those on the loot sheet? 
they are not but uh... if you just drag the from the compendium if you drag those scrolls onto your sheet and um you know those enter are it as pretty good as a scroll uh, I would remember. use them as soon as possible. Uh, well, I I mean, like I would have to um, use magic device most of, most of them, some of them. I don't know. You also detect one other magic aura. Um. So you see a when you follow the aura, you find what look to be like kind of a kind of a shell of some sort. Um, like it looks like it maybe it would be like some sort of like like maybe uh, like a crab shell almost. It looks like, um, but it's a larger and it's it's sitting on top of one of the shelves. And uh, the magic aura isn't coming from the shell itself, but you notice embedded in the shell is what looks to be like a little bit a little pearl. Embedded within the shell's claws. Uh, a magical pearl. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to make these scrolls. Uh, I will yeah, try to try identify, identify them. Oh, or 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 chase. Doesn't matter. It. Okay. Uh, the this is a pearl of power five. Mm. So restores one fifth level one spell. One fifth level spell. Dang. Mm -hmm. For any any prepared spellcaster. Wait, who is that in the party? Me and uh. Rosalina and you. Rosalina. Uh, Pilbo as well. Oh, cause he's cleric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I definitely don't need it. I don't use spells that much. Like I just <laughs> acid splash all the time because I'm like I don't know. Let's see, I probably can put that one into the... Parsley. My build is strong enough, I don't actually need anything more than cantrips to be strong. Um, I, mean, I mean, the only thing I'm going to do is raise dead, so probably I, not best for me. I mean, I could take it, and I could put, like, plain shit There's a lot something. of good 5th yeah, level yeah. cleric spells, like freedom of movement, right? I mean, yeah, keep in mind, Pearl of Power is just, once you cast the spell, you can use it to get it back, so it's any spell you want. Yeah, anybody else can... I, I vote give to Pilbo. Anybody else can roll perception. That's fine. I don't need it. Well, unless, if you unless, look around. Yeah, unless Rosalina has something else she wants to use with it. I barely use my spells. I'm pretty much a hex master, I suppose. You watched Arcane? You have hex tech technology? No. Oh. I have it set up so you guys should be able to see like Togbad's health bar as well if you guys want. Uh, However, Harkin yes. has inspired me to play TFT again. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Why? Uh, like TFT's TFT. not bad. TFT's fine. It's much better than it used to be now. It's less Is like it? meta. Yeah, because there's more like, I guess, luck and possibilities. Uh, I. My brother's been trying to get me to play it. I might play it. There's a lot of combinations. It's a lot. However, it seems assassins are still OP as fuck. Um, yeah, if you guys look as well, there's that I mentioned in the description, there were some leathery mounds in the room. Uh -huh. um, but I didn't you... detect magic on them? No, but if you go look at them, they actually look like they're actually a creature, dead creature of some sort. Ew. There's two of them. They're two dead creatures that are set into like a, a pile there. Are they large size by any chance? Uh, they are actually huge size. Oh, I oh. like that. I like that. Can I try to identify the creature? I need to you, heal Tog bad. You may, yes. It'd be a knowledge dungeoneering. Oh. Uh, do I even have that? 
I do, it's not great. After, you know, uh, yeah, Jace thinks that these are cloakers. I'm going to heal Togbed. Cloaker, I hardly know her. For 29. Okay. Cloakers? What the fuck is that? Uh, cloakers are a aberration. Um, they tend to, they have kind of, they look like, uh, like they they are like a ray like creature almost and they they tend to they tend to hang out in the like on the top of cave uh and they're like ambush predators basically now normally um... they're large these these are bigger than a normal cloaker would be they're abnormally large yeah these are abnormally large cloakers are, are there aberrant aberrations yes um, so normally, the way they do is they'll, yeah, they'll wait and ambush on the, and they look sort of like um, a stalactite or whatever, whichever one's usually on the ceiling. But they could sometimes they'll they'll lay on the on the ground too. T for top. Is this something that can be raised dented? <laughs> Maybe Does it have a like skeleton. A... Uh, I don't know. Do they have? Do yeah? They do have skeletons. It, they or... might just be like a series of gaseous bladders. Cause they yeah. Fly, right? yeah, yeah. I don't know if they have a skeleton. It's Maybe their aberration, so their anatomy is not well documented. It might be too complicated. I'll, I'll. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, a typical one has like an eight foot wingspan and weighs a hundred pounds, but uh, this one is like. This one's got like a fifteen foot wingspan, and probably it seems like it's probably lighter now that it's it, these are lighter now that they're they've died. But yeah, they probably weigh a lot more. Yeah. Um, right but yeah, you also know that they have like a they can emit an infrasonic moan that can cause mental uh, effects such as confusion, uh, mm. paralysis, and things like that. And they're also they also are uh they also are intelligent. But these oh. ones look like they've they die. That they've um they've been dead for a little while. And Togbad tells you, like, I, I think we killed those. Oh. I mean not me, but you know, some other giants. Well, Good job. They look hideous. But yeah, now that he's like calmed down, he's like, oh, we we sure showed those scorpions, right? I um, think we, sure. We could, we could take on other scorpion things. They weren't so tough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, he he goes around. He actually is like tall enough that he can see most of the shelves just like by walking around on the ground. <laughs> Whereas most of you guys have to like air walk to get up to the upper shelves, but or climb them. But um, yeah, he doesn't seem to find anything that you guys haven't already found. Okay. Totally forgot to add my seventh level spells to Foundry. Ah. I was like, yeah. where are they? Okay. There are four doors out of here. More door? Four more door. More doors. Okay. Uh... Right. Also, I need to get to town at some point so that I can start. Creating undead. Don't have the materials to cast the spells. So. Hmm. Um. Okay. Well. Uh. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. 
Uh, I'm kind of a counterclockwise kind of person, so like maybe right, this back. door. Which door are we checking? I vote the south one, but you guys can All right. overrule me. I'm cool with that. I'll check this door. So I've got to be difficult okay. is seeing the north General door. But... I will do that. Oh, am I still shaking? Um, if you guys look around, actually, I go ahead and remove that because you guys spent some time looking around in here for stuff and whatnot. Okay. I, I think it would have worn off by now. Gotcha. I will roll my perception. Okay. My plus twenty nine perception. Seven prepared anime deads. What the hell? No, no, no. And that sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that like one of the an update broke so worksheet, so I'll have to look into that for next next time. Let me get these heights off you. I'm guessing you guys are not fifty feet up in the air still. Okay. Um the door doesn't seem to be locked or trapped, although it doesn't seem like it's been open for a long time, so it might be a little a little stiff to open. It's stiff. But this yeah, like you think it might it might be it might be a little stiff because it hasn't it hasn't opened it looks like in a long time, but it, it looks like it would open. And it isn't locked or trapped, as far as you can tell. Okay. Then I'll uh yeah, I'll open this door. Okay. So yeah, it gives you a little resistance, but you're able to get it open. Um So and there's a hallway. Another door on the other side. <laughs> the classic, the classic uh, hallway, twenty foot hallway. Hall door hall. Yeah, yeah hall door hall. <laughs> the Pathfinder story. I'll uh, I'll travel forward carefully, looking as I go. Okay. And then I'll check the door if I get up there. Togbad will kind of stand to the side waiting for everyone else to go because he's doing his job of watching everyone's back. Um, yeah, this door, similar to the last one, seems like it hasn't been open for a while, but doesn't look like there's any traps or anything. Do you open it? I will open it. Okay. Uh, so this room, uh, in each of the six corners of this hexagonal room, a statue stands atop a, di uh, a dais. Each uh, is a six-foot-tall woman dressed in a short robe and wielding a silvery sword. Ooh. Statues have four wings, the lower pair of each being small and atrophied, and have no faces whatsoever. So wait, which ones don't have faces? None of them have faces. None of them have faces. Yeah, they have four four wings. Well, the two lower I wings on that. each of them are like shriveled up. And mm -hmm. yeah, they're holding a silvery sword. They're all holding a silvery sword. All right. Um, I call over the resident Thessalonian experts to come and tell me if they recognize who this person might be. Is that me? I feel like that's Pilbo. He's supposed to study Thassalon, right? I think you guys both did. I mean, anybody what, has knowledge? Anybody has knowledge history? Yeah, no, it's not me. Uh, let me look. I don't know if I do. No, I'm not a historian. When you say that Togbad, like, kind of crouching down, has a confused look and points to himself. Huh? 
Oh? <laughs> Do you know things? He shakes his head. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, somebody has knowledge history. Someone's been making these checks. Uh, not it? I feel like it's Pilbo. I don't have history, dog. Oh. Unsure. I know before you had, uh... Uh, you does had a... Silric have history? A little, yeah. Oh, okay. Yay, we have some historical knowledge. All right, so Silric comes and looks up, um, but you're pretty sure this doesn't look like anything you recognize from any history you know. Mm. I feel like this might be a, a rune lord or something. All right, well, I'll check around for traps. Okay, uh, as soon as you step into this room, something does happen. Uh, you hear a voice speaking, and it's a language you don't think you should be able to understand because they're speaking in Thessalonian, but for some reason you do. Um, and it says, Welcome to the Hall of Arcane Wonder. Please treat all exhibits with care and respect and do not attempt unsanctioned interactions within. Please enjoy your stay. Oh, get out of my head, you wanker. And it's a you, it's something you actually hear, but like, and it's in Thessalonian, but for some reason you understand it as though maybe there was a tongues effect in, uh, or a tongues effect in place. But yeah, after it does that, the uh, and the voices all seem to be coming from the statues, but um, they don't actually animate or anything. They just they just tell you to you know not attempt unsanctioned interactions, and treat all exhibits with care and respect. What if I pull out my mithril short sword? Uh, you pull out your mythical short sword and nothing happens. Yeah. And I point it at the statues, saying, don't try any funny business. Okay. You do that. And it's, uh, this area... Isn't like, that room's... what they're trying to sell you? <laughs> yeah. The room's pretty well They're just statues. Yeah. There's areas over here. All right, well, I'm going to go in further and gesture for the others to follow. Okay. What about these doors? Are these special looking doors? Uh, nope, they just look like normal doors. Um, similar to the ones you guys just went through. And then these op these are just openings rather than proper doors. But yeah, you see, like, there's just other rooms over here as well. Um, the one to to the East looks like it has a statue uh, over in there. Uh, it looks like maybe like a Sphinx statue or something over there. And the... A Sphinx statue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it looks like there's some sort of statue over in the other to the west as well. Hmm. suppose and we're supposed to check out these side areas then well let's go check out this one i guess okay this room uh half of this hexagonal room is buried under a wall of hardened lava including the hindquarters of a gray stone statue of a faceless sphinx the Sphinx sits atop a two-foot-tall dais. Uh, shallow shelves have been carved into the side of it, uh, in which sit various objects that appear to be of an oracular nature. Crystal balls, sensors, and the like, many of which have fallen from their alcoves to crack or shatter on the stone floor. Oh. Uh, the magic people might want to check these I out with me. I do not have mending, unfortunately. I've got. Hmm. Well, maybe there's oh, still the magic. magic. Okay. Um. Wait, do I have mending? I do have mending. You do detect magic on one. On one thing. Um. You would need make hold to do something like put these things together. And that was on the cracked crystal ball. 
Uh, the other stuff do not detect as magical. And these other things that are that are there are things like uh, a dented mithril font that you could put like water in, for example, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, strain, a handful of strange dice that look like they're carved from bone of some sort. Uh, a silver diviner's rod. And a curious metal orb set with tiny jet stones. So the cracked orb or ball or whatever is it small or how big is it um and is it lingering magic or is it full-on magic uh it's got a it's got a proper mat like full magic aura but does, oh. something does seem off about it well, if we wanna, if what Rosaline is telling us is, uh, you know, interesting, then I'm willing to go in and explore. Well, not this yet. Place. Let me see what school I'm what it... detecting. Yeah, go for, go ahead and roll knowledge arcana. It definitely has a. It doesn't. I don't know if it lists what size it is. Whatever the size of a, what you expect a crystal ball to be, I guess it's probably. Okay. It probably. It, you can hold it in your hands. You could hold it in your hands. Yeah. It might be pretty big for Rosalina, but. It's, uh... it's like the size of her head. Yeah. <laughs> it weighs seven pounds, so. Yeah, it's got some weight. Yeah. Um. Okay, you know that it has a uh, divination aura. It's like a bowling ball, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, it's just divination. It might be okay to go in there or both. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And uh, I, I will check it as long as, you know, a few of us go in together. Eh, okay, I'll go in with you. Looking at Pilbo and Silric, too. <laughs> I'll go in. Kind of the three melee. All right, let's go in. And in terms of the statue, um, if you want to know anything about it, you can roll on Knowledge Religion. That I don't have. I looked at Pilbo. Why is mine grayed out? Do I have religion? Don't know. Uh, Pilbo, you actually don't know who specifically this is supposed to be, but you do think it is a depiction of an obscure deity of some sort. I'm not supposed to have religion. Hmm, I can't possibly beat Pilbo's check. But I'll roll it anyways. Maybe I'll assist. Oh, I know why I didn't roll knowledge history. I forgot you switch over to the backgrounds tab. Oh, uh, yep. wait. Do I have it too? <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. I forgot. <laughs> you dumb <Derp>. motherfucker. <laughs> I... I... We're not dumb. We both did the same thing. We can't possibly both be dumb. Oh, we're both dumb. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <possible>. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at my hero lab. It's like, you have knowledge history. I'm like, wait, what? I don't know if it matters, but I rolled the history and I'm trying to assist on the religion. I don't have religion. Yeah. Well, if Pilbo is like, hmm, not sure. I don't think any of us else will get any heart. True. Well, no, we can very high DC. All right, well, we'll sift around all the stuff. Okay. Maybe at least there's valuables. Uh, like some of the other... Umbrella, like, as things. you move closer to the statue, uh, okay. something, something happens. Uh, Should you I be feel... closer or where I am right now? Nope, you're within 10 feet, which is what causes it to go off. Uh, so, um, yeah, you feel the room begin as if it's spinning around you while the Sphinx statue grinds to life, turns to, and it turns to face you. Uh, you feel the faceless gaze hold you motionless while the world crumbles away to be replaced by the vastness of space. So you're in like a void, basically. Um, but then an instant later, um, and like, you hear like this weird, like whispering in your head, like you can't quite make out what it's saying, but like kind of like the, a bunch of voices all whispering, like dark secrets, <laughs> but 
then an instant later, the room returns to normal. However, I need you to roll a will save. Okay. Okay. You're fine. You, you, you kind of like feel this, the, like a, almost like it's going to try to cause confusion basically, but you're able to shake it off. Like you feel this kind of confusion from the effect, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything otherwise. Okay. Um, I guess I'll avert my gaze from the, the faceless thing and I'll let the others know that, yeah, there's something funky with this, this statue. And only Umbrella saw that. None of you guys did. Well, I mean, we're not here for a statue, right? So leave it. I'll just sift through the things that we saw from a distance and see if anything's valuable. Okay. Uh, you move back over and start looking through it and nothing else happens. Uh, you can roll in a praise check if you'd like. Sure. Okay, so you know that some of these uh, non-magical stuff that are here do have value. Uh, the mithril font is worth uh, 1,000 gold pieces and could be used for, like, a, if you filled it with water, it could be used for, like, a scry spell. All right. If you're casting it, it would count as a mirror worth 1,000 gold. Um, the strange dice are worth 500 gold. The strange dice. <laughs> yeah, they're carved out of out of bones, um, specifically Titan's bones. Um, and the diviner's rod is worth two hundred gold pieces. Is the font something we could transport? Yeah. So for it's okay. pretty small. Oh, it's like a bowl. Yeah. All right, well, I'll offer it to Pilbo in his bag of holding. All right, can you loot it? And right now it's dented, so that would decrease the value a little bit, but if you repaired it, it'd be worth 1000 Right now it's only worth 900 if you just sold it with the dent still in it, but if you assume... I'm, sure I'm just assuming mending it. it. Yeah, assuming you cast, like, Mending or Make Hole on it or something, it would, it would be worth full. All right, I'll, I'll take the dice. Those look like neat things to have. Do you have a loot item for it? I do not, unfortunately. What was it called? Although the 900 GP font is going to be 1,000 GP if you if you repair it. So if you want to just put it as 1,000, because I think it's going to be trivial for you guys to repair it. So. Okay. And then there's the cracked crystal ball, which is a magic item. All right, let's uh, I guess I'll pick it up for Rosalina and hand it to her. Uh, what? Why are you giving me this? You wanted to check it out, right? I can't fix it. I don't know if it works properly with a crack in it. Would you be able to, I don't know, fix it with magic somehow? I'm sure some yeah, of you could fix it with magic. Uh... Asked if you could fix it with magic. I mean, I'll I'll take it, put it in my bag. Okay. Well, yeah. I think it's worth trying to repair. I I can't repair these things. Maybe not right now. They get I don't think make whole is uh, the only way to fix magical items, right? Uh, is it make whole? Hmm. Yeah, I believe usually you need make hole for magic items. We can yeah, always take somebody who has make hole. Or find, like, I don't know, a scroll or something. 
I, don't know, I feel like somebody should take the the cracked crystal ball. I mean, we should take it, yeah, just um, she doesn't know what to do with it. Just uh, put it in your bags for now. Okay. Or let your familiar hold on to it. It's probably pretty. Oh, you won't get it back if you let him do that. Well, then we'll know it's safe with him. Uh, should I just call this cracked crystal ball or something? Cracked. Yeah. Cracked crystal ball. Okay. Alright, well, uh, let's uh, look over here. Okay. Uh, those scrolls, I'm assuming they're like sorcerer spell level, caster level. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're all arcane. <clears throat> it's just the caster level for some of them very. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're whatever the minimum caster level for it for a wizard to cast them. Okay. Okay, this room uh, hums with an unsettling noise. Oh, hello. For at its center churns a great ball of fire. The sphere How? Man, measures we didn't see the light from this thing. <laughs> You might have saw some of it flickering in, but these these all these rooms are well lit. Um, there's like a magic light emanating from in the room anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, sphere measures ten feet across, hangs the center of the chamber, periodically sending short tendrils of fire out as if tasting the air around it. Well, that looks dangerous. Yeah, it it definitely does. Uh, anybody. If you'd like, if you, anyone who looks at it can roll a knowledge arcana, try to figure out what's going on with this. Yeah. Um, Umbrellas, you would also be able to tell this is the most obvious looking lowest <laughs> lowest DC perception. Actually, it literally says perception DC automatic. So, uh, But you do think that this as well could function as a trap. And could okay. be probably disabled like a trap as well if you wanted. All right. Time to crack my knuckles and and do this. <laughs> Rosalina, though, you know, yeah, you when you look at this, you realize this is a um, move your token where you'd be able to see it. But oops, uh, you know that this is a. Uh, you think this is a blade blast fireball that has somehow been paused at the instant of of detonation. Um, oh, weird. But you okay. think that it should be it should be actually as long as nobody touches it. Uh, it would be it'd be fine. Um, you also think though that anybody who prepares an evocation spell while studying the fireball can empower the evocation spell as if it were enhanced by empower spell without increasing the spell's actual level. Interesting. So if you guys sat in here to prepare spells and you have evocation spells like Shocking Grasp or something like that, you can give it a free em empower and you can do that up to three spells. Maybe That's prepare pretty it in sweet. Manner. But it requires a spellcraft check, and if you fail, the spell is prepared as normal, and you take some intelligence damage from magical feedback. So there's a little bit of danger to it. You have to be a really, a really proficient spellcaster to do it. Uh, odd... me, I think we should leave it alone. <laughs> if that's what sets it off, then yeah, nobody touch it. <laughs> but yeah, Relis, you do think you could disable it if you needed to, though. Or wanted to. It would be neat to disable an explo a delayed explosion. <laughs> but I'll, I'll go over around it over here. I'll okay. tell you what, if we get overwhelmed with enemies, then maybe you can do it. We could throw something at it. Uh... A tog that had very, like, presses himself against the wall. He's yeah. like, uh... <laughs> but yeah trying really hard to stay away from it um yeah 
the room over here uh, has a hulking object lies upon a 15-foot wide circular uh, dais at the center of this room. The object is made of stone and seems to be a fragment of a much larger colossal stone carriage or conveyance uh, with immense stone rollers for wheels. Snake motifs cover every corner of the object, while its front has been carved to resemble an immense serpent skull. Smaller shelves built into the edge of the dais contain a number of other objects ranging from weapons to pieces of armor to more mysterious objects. So there's like a snake statue on the top and then like a bunch of just like weapons around the base. Uh, yep. Pieces of armor, weapons, and some other more mysterious objects. Odd. Um, they're in like little alcoves around it. This is like basically it's set up like a museum or like or something basically. Yeah. All right, you well, think that the other room, like the the Sphinx room, was kind of supposed to be like that, but a lot of the stuff had like fallen over because the room got partially destroyed by uh, some sort of volcanic activity. But this room is in pretty good shape. Like, doesn't look like there's any damage. All the, Everything's where it's supposed to be right now. Okay, well, uh, alright, everyone else help me check this room out. Okay, uh, I'll do the the, the detect the detects magic. Um, you do detect two magic auras. All right, I'll narrow down where they are and uh, what schools we might be dealing with. Okay. Uh, basically, you narrow them down. They're both on, uh, basically on kind of on two rods. Uh, one of them looks like it's probably like much thinner, like a wand. The other one looks like it's a much, uh, like, more solid rod. Like it could be used as like a mace or something, perhaps. Ooh, a rod. Or it's maybe a rod, yeah, like an actual magic item rod. Mm -hmm. And anybody who has knowledge history can roll that for this room as well to figure out what what the deal is with it. I discovered I do have that, so I or a knowledge arcana that will give you some, a different it's a different set of information, but either one of those. <laughs> and my die hit your die. Okay, uh, so the knowledge history is telling you guys that the um, what you think you're seeing here are relics of the ancient Serpent Folk Empire, which is an, an, an enemy of ancient Aslan, and by extension, an enemy of the nation of Thassalon, since it was since Thassalon was founded by people that came from Aslan. So they included them as part of their museum? They had an, yep, they had an exhibit on the ancient enemies of of Aslan the as part of the museum. Um and as for the this the main centerpiece of this, ye um that knowledge arcana is enough to tell Rosalina that this used to be a construct but it's the it's been it was defeated or destroyed um this is what is called a juggernaut um oh and a juggernaut is a um is like a construct with divine powers basically they're like tied to a deity usually oh um, okay so Can furthermore we... you can identify what deity it was tied to potentially with a knowledge religion anybody who has that Lots of knowledge. Bilbo, do you do you know anything about this? History check? Religion. Uh, religion. Mm. Maybe Pilbo could turn it to his okay. religion. This one is also pretty obscure, but not as obscure as the other ones. You actually do know what this is. This is this uh this when it was functional, it would have been a um to the main serpent folk deity um, at the time, which was 
Yadersius. I don't know how to say this, but I'll put it in chat. <laughs> But yeah, it was the main. Idrisius, Idrisius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the lizards? They have like lizard tongues and lizard speech, right? I don't know. Oh yeah, it was the serpent folks that battled with ancient Aslan during the Age of Legend. Um, this yeah. was the main deity of them, uh, chaotic evil deity who's primary areas of concern were serpent folk, immortality, and poison. Um, but this deity kind of fell along with the uh, serpent folk empire like thousands of years ago. Oh, that might be why the, the construct is deactivated. There's no more there's no more deity, deity to power it. Yeah. That would make sense. But, yeah. Not a whole lot else that Pilbo would know about uh, Yadersius, but... Because... It's been gone for so long, but yep. Um, so yeah, like I said, though, you do find two magic auras as well. There's also in some of these other alcoves you find um, there's a looks like a serpent mask made of gold with amethyst eyes. Looks like it's probably pretty valuable. It looks valuable, yeah. Uh, a mummified snake that looks like it it probably, if you tried to do anything with it, would probably disintegrate. It looks like it's in very, very dried out. Um, and then, yeah, you find this rod, these rod and what looks like a wand. I'm having trouble assessing the value of these things, but I think they're valuable. You think the mask in particular probably has some value? It's one of those masks that, uh, you know, attunes to you. I mean, maybe, but you do. Rosalina might remind you that you, she didn't detect any magic from the mask. True. All right, well, yeah, this place does seem like a museum. Uh, no dragon, though. No, what? We're here for a dragon. No, I, I think if we the, the dragon was here, we would have seen it. Yeah. It seemed like it was very lively. But now we have more doors here. Yep. More doors. Yay, more door. And it looks like there's labels on the doors. Okay, what's the one to the north say? You can't read it because it's in Thessalonian, but... Ah, damn it. Do you, uh... Someone else, come over and read this. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. If you bring Pilbo or Jace over, they might be able to read it. Uh, sure, you can do it. I'll supervise. Okay. Uh, you see that the sign that's on the door says further exhibits this way? All right. What about the south one? South one says uh, Dreaming Tower exhibit. Dreaming Tower? Mm-hmm. Weird. Let's check out the further exhibits. I guess we're in a museum of some kind. That's yeah. odd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I guess I'll check the door for traps. 
And then if I don't find any traps, I'll open it. Okay. And there's no traps, so open the door and leads into a hallway. That looks like part of the hallway is cut up then. Um there's been destroyed by lava flow or something perhaps, but there's a a T that leads over to another door. Another set of double doors. I will carefully go first. Okay, and you looked at this door, and it looks like there's another sign, um, and this one actually says uh, restricted area. Oh, okay. Now we're getting to the good stuff. <laughs> What's over here to the north? Like so this, rubble? Yeah, it looks like the uh, lava flow perhaps came in and cut off that part of the... All right, um, I'm going to check this door for traps or see if it's locked. Uh, it does look like it's locked, but you don't see any traps. All right, give me a moment, everybody. I'm going to try to unlock this with my even more impressive disable device. Okay, you easily unlock this door. Yeah, once we got to 10, like, I have a couple of feats that did the what you may call it those like plus the skill when you get 10 doubled. ranks yeah all right it's open uh the ceiling of this vaulted cathedral-like chamber rises to a height of 60 feet above the northeastern corner of the room is somewhat collapsed um well actually you guys can already see that part because that's so that's including this hallway as well um but the rest of the chamber seems to be in good condition. Um, double doors opened the walls to the east and west, while four alcoves to the north and south are occupied by statues of winged women with no faces and silvery swords. So just like the other statues that I talked to you earlier. Um, we didn't identify those, right? No, you guys weren't able to make sense of what it was trying to depict. But um, you see four 10-foot wide 15 foot tall glass jars capped with huge metal lids and filled with cloudy green liquid that sit in the middle of the room. Don't open those. Large shadowy shapes look to be floating inside of each Ooh, jar. Hey, Pilbo, you got that uh, enemy detecting thing? I detect Maybe danger. I bet you that rod will detect some enemies. <laughs> Maybe. Wait, don't we have that? We have like yeah, a rod Pilbo that it. yeah. Pilbo has it, yeah. Detect enemies. Yeah, detect enemies. Alright, let me double check how detect enemies works. Wait, detect enemy? That can't be right. It's a rod of detect enemies? Uh-huh. Enemy detection, three per day. Um. Yeah, I tried just... typing it in, and it brought up a third-party spell, and I'm like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> okay, here we are. Um. So 60 feet... Okay, so yeah, you do detect you do detect enemies within your detection range of sixty feet. Um, yeah, it's divination magic, so based on what the magic thinks it would be enemies. So it detects uh four enemies 
pinpointed within three of the uh jars one of them it doesn't is the one down here that one it doesn't detect any, any enemies from doesn't okay but the these three over here it, it definitely detects enemies in all right and all we see are are shadowy figures inside of them uh from a cursory glance yes it's very it looks like it's it's like this green foggy liquid you, you kind of think like a mad scientist lab there's like bubbles uh -huh. probably in there and whatnot but yeah all you see in there it looks like are large shadowy shapes floating on inside maybe if you is guessing some kind of ooze or something I maybe i mean maybe if you go in and like get a closer look maybe you can make out more by like looking into the that's a little but yeah, no ooze from just looking at like the liquid here is jumping to mind. Well, I tell the others, are you guys all ready? We might be facing some resistance if we want to keep exploring this chamber. Uh, I'm sure, ready. I'm going to take out my mithril short sword. And, okay. uh,. I tell the other, well, I guess Pilbo tells us that we can stick to this one, maybe. And there Just won't be don't enemies. break open those jars. That's that's all I ask. All right, well, I'm assuming we're all going at the same time. Are you guys all going in? I'll go in. Silver's going in. Pilbo's going in. Okay. Looks like everyone's going in. I'm hiding in the corner. Okay, nothing's happening. You go in here and it's, you know, there's a little bit of, like, um, like, it's actually, it's actually pretty quiet. Like, you don't hear, it's nothing, like, hooked up to these or anything. It's just, there's, like, a little, like, soft kind of bubbling kind of noise from all of them, but that that's about it. Man, when are we going to rest? You guys we already did rest. rest. Wait, we did? Yeah. yeah, we rested like not that long ago. Wait, how does the spell thing work on this? If you hit the rest button, it should reset your spells. Wait, I have to hit it? Where's that at? It's on the summary page. Oh. Oh, I have... Wait, do I have spells? I don't know if I have spells. Uh, I mean, you might have... To, I'm not sure. I mean, you're a prepared caster, so you probably have to drag in and prepare whatever spells you want, but it restores all your daily uses of things like Arcane Pool and whatever, but yeah. Although you did use one, so make sure you knock that off, because um, you used one in the fight against... Okay. The, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I missed that. I didn't know we rested. That was it. the very first thing we did, was you guys, you guys left okay. uh, away from Giltsburg, because you guys didn't want to deal with, like, weird scary dreams it was, yeah it was just confusing because i was doing the spells opposite where i initially had zero of one and when i used it i made it one of one like one used of one. Oh, okay but and so i was like confused what spells i had and didn't have so i was just like waiting till we rested to okay know that i had everything okay well yeah I missed you, that. you did rest so <laughs> okay all right so i could cast some buffs then yeah, um well. What do I oh, have? Speaking of, um, I never. Uh... How I will tall are these vats? Twenty-seven temples. Yeah, Sora probably would have. <laughs> Sora. Yeah. Oh yeah, Major Armor on Sora. I wanted to use, use up one of the key pool mm. points because that would have been used for the uh, bark skin. I cast heroism on myself and on Silric. Okay. Yeah, I can check mark another checkpoint thing. I'm guessing the three errors that just popped up were <laughs> silver turning me. heroism on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'll get that fixed for next time. <laughs> I think what happened is is an update. I honestly, what I should do is um, I should just if I get it working again, I'm just going to avoid updating while we're in the middle of you know a module or something because. Um, I can actually, one of the things that's nice with Foundry is you don't actually have to update when it tells you there's an update available if you want. You can continue 
using the old version, which is probably the way to do it because updates sometimes break things. And I think that's I think something about the update broke Silric Sheet. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think that's what I'll in the future. That's what I'll do is I'll just avoid doing updates and I'll do them between books or between so if something breaks. It's like you know we're only fixing them between books. Or even between APs. I mean, we're actually we're uh, getting close to the end of this AP. I mean, there's still one more book after this, but we're only halfway through this book. But we'll probably finish this AP for we'll finish it sometime during next year, probably. <laughs> honestly. Anyway, um, okay. So you got got some heroisms up. Uh, okay. Togbad, you know, gets down and he's squinting into the <laughs> trying to make out what's in these um in these jars, but he's just kind of scratching his head and looking don't, confused. Don't, like he normally how, how tall are the vats? Fifteen feet tall. So he could reach into them. Well there's lids I on them. Oh there's don't lids on them. Recommend yeah. opening uh, this period. <laughs> They're 10 foot wide, 15 foot tall glass jars capped with huge metal lids and filled with cloudy green liquid. Which oh, shadowy... I kind of want to know what the liquid is. Dangerous, that's what it is. Wait, didn't we detect enemies, though? In three of in them. In three of them, but not in one of them. Oh, okay. Uh, if you want to open if it, we go ahead. Know, even if we find out what the liquid is, it's not like we can do anything with it. So, well, it, it might oh. tell us more about what are inside these things. But I don't think that matters. We're here for a dragon, not for... But what if they get out? Keep the lids on. Uh, Togbed like kind of does like a gasp and <laughs> scurries away from that one. he's like uh, i think there's a dragon in that one a dragon uh, yeah what kind of experiments are these crazy wizards doing someone with magic or any kind of like alchemical sk skills please tell me something about these vats they're bad we should leave them damn i wish hannah was here <laughs> She'd want to investigate it. She would, probably. Alright, well, I'm gonna carefully skirt my way around to this side. Okay. Keeping an eye on this bottom left vat. Okay. If uh, anything like swims close to the edge of it, like I'll uh I'll hold my ground and just not move. Uh nope, you move past it, you definitely looks like you see you feel like you see like a some sort of form in there, but it's hard to make out and it doesn't look it, it does not look like it moves at all as you go past. I gesture for the others and and Tograd to come over these doors. No, oh, I'm hiding in my corner. Okay, I'll hide in this corner. <laughs> okay. There's like statues and vats of liquid and enemies this in here. This is definitely like a sketchy looking room. It's I'm very not, sketchy. I'm not going to lie. If I were a player right now, I'd be terrified. If I had the requisite skills, I'd be trying to get as much information as I could. Th this room seems like it's loaded with information. Maybe. For the right, the right PC. Not it. I'm scared. That's why Drew's always wanted to play an investigator. <laughs> yeah. Because he just he just wants to know everything. All right. This door uh, doesn't look to be locked or trapped. All right, then I'll open it. Okay. Um. I'm not gonna do this. I guess I'll use the brush tool. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so this room. Uh, the roar of water echoes from this chamber. So it seems you open it. You like melee here. You couldn't really hear it before because the through the thick door. But yeah. Um. The air is damp with cool mist, and a dark pool fills much of the western end of the chamber. Uh, the south, there's a set of stairs that lead up to another room, and um, tumbling into the pool uh, from a bronze ringed gap in the ceiling above is a column of frothy water, while a small ledge sits just above the water level, the westernmost edge of the pool itself. Calm but frothy water? Mm hmm. Weird. Also, how are you doing on well, time that, for some people? It's the most of the pools calm, but like the part of it's frothy, I guess. Yeah, it's like a there's like a weird. It's like the column is so tell me the pool. Yeah, there's a column of frothy water. But then once it gets down to the pool itself, it's pretty calm. That also looks interesting and magic -y. All right, everybody else, let's, uh, you know, follow me in. I'll detect magic on this water. Or the pool, I guess. Area. Okay, uh, as soon as you step in the room, something happens before you get a chance to do that, though. Yay! Hello. Is this Squidworth? No. Oh. No. It's uh, you see some forms of water emerge out of the, uh, pools, and uh, they come rushing towards you, and we are going to let's see. Do you guys want to do this? We'll just, we'll go ahead and do this combat. I think you know, we'll get started on it at least. Or would you guys rather? You kill. I kill. Would you guys rather uh just save this for next session? It is getting pretty late, but. Uh, I have time. Okay, we'll go ahead and start this combat. I'm then. fine. Uh, let me hit the start encounter button. So everybody can roll initiative. Oh, and Togbad will roll initiative as well. With his negative one initiative. Uh, is that everybody? I Okay, there we go. I got a roll. There we go. Okay. Um... I beat everybody, even though I rolled an eight. Yeah. It's That's just rogue things. Improved initiative for you. All, yeah, all the other things too. Yeah, you get half your level of rogue or something, or no? I just have a bunch of bonuses from different places. I can't remember what they. I know rogues get something specific for to, to boost their initiative as well. Uh, okay. Well, you got to go f uh first then. Oh, well, it's one of the shards as well. Giving oh, me gives you a bonus as well. Yeah, and then I have improved initiative, and then I just have a lot of decks. So, as me being the first one, I'm pretty sure I cannot sneak attack these things, so I can't do a whole lot here. Yeah, I, elementals are like the worst things to fight with as a rogue. Yeah, like so but I can still do some things. I'm going to toss a bomb at the bottom one okay because i believe it can still take fire damage if only i could sneak attack it let's see my bomb damage is 76 now okay uh, here comes a range touch attack.
It was, uh, it was a low roll. Does a 14 hit its... Or sorry, an 18 hit its touch. Uh, it's big. Flat-footed touch, so... Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. It takes 27 fire damage. Blam. Okay. I'm just trying to see if they have any... I think they just take the damage. I don't even think they have any special resistance to fire or anything. Even though they're made out of water, oddly enough. Yeah. <laughs> So that is the the funny thing, yeah. And then I'm also gonna move. Uh, I'm going to go. I guess it's just causing like boiling the water, water or something. Boils, like, yeah, yeah, you see like yeah. some steam coming off of it, but yeah, it does look like it does damage to it. I'm good in here. Okay. All right, this uh, elemental. Gonna move over. Where to start? It's gonna come up here. It's gonna do a single slam against Rosalina. I rolled a one. Ha ha. Ha. Lucky. I'm too Lucky small rat. for you. All right, Jace. You can't see this happening, but you hear it. Nope. I hear combat's happening. I guess I come out of my scared corner. Okay. Uh, where can I stand and not get hit? Oh boy. I guess behind Pilbo, and I can shoot at the bottom one, maybe. Maybe. Or do I need to stand like here? I think. Yeah, I mean, you definitely could see it from there. Okay. Um, I will arcane pool enhancement. Do 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 do. So I've used two. I'll just do single attack. Uh oh boy, how do we do this? Uh, single attack with deadly aim, many shot. Oh, I have to turn off the other buffs. Uh, turn off. Spell combat. This is exciting stuff. Delay mini. No, no mini shot, no rapid shot. Uh, point blank. How do we measure? No, point blank. All right, single attack mode. Okay. Um,. For the bottom one, that will hit. It's also flat-footed still. Yes, the bottom one. Um, Emphasis full round, but it definitely wasn't. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why it says it, that. You do hit it. It doesn't look like all the damage it affects it. But it oh. does, does do it. Does it hit. has DR dash, because it's elemental, I think. Yep. It's difficult to actually hurt something that's just made of water. <laughs> Yeah, you're trying to shoot an arrow at water. <laughs> I guess I could have put a spell with that, right? Probably. No, I don't. I didn't spell combat anyway, so it's fine. You don't need to spell combat. You could have done a spell strike. I don't know. I don't remember how it works. I I can. I thought you had to spell combat to cast a spell and attack. Uh, no. Spell Strike makes it so that the part where you do your attack, like, as long as it's a spell that has an attack, you're doing an attack anyway. It just lets you use your bow to do the attack instead of okay. the way a no spell normally does. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Well, I, I, it's fine. I'm not gonna worry about the three acid damage or whatever. One to three. Alright, let's take some damage. Cause of death for Zerdurium. Only needed one more point of acid damage. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it could happen. Uh, all right. Uh, Pilbo. Hmm. Great stuff for me.
The good news is you should be able to affect these things with all of your uh, mental stuff. Yeah. yeah I... Knowledge planes if you want to identify these, by the way. Don't have that. Um, that's enough. You know that these are elder water elementals. Mm, so they yeah. do have dr dash um, and all the elemental traits, but yeah, they they are affected by things like that are mind affecting. They do have minds as uh, kind of alien as they are. Um, okay. They can actually put out magical fires as well, or normal fires automatically, but they make castle little checks to put out magical fires with the drench attack that they have. Um, and they're weaker if they if if they fight you outside of water, but they are in water right now, so they're at their full power. All right, I'm going to I'm sorry to the wrong map somehow. Change or not. Probably not. One. I'm going to yeah, just Move up or move in front of uh, that one. Okay. And uh, visions of madness. Um, it's going to take an entire opportunity as you move up next to it, though. So let me do that first. Thirty-three. Does that hit? No. Okay. So it misses you then. Go ahead and do your visions of madness then. Okay. Who got heroism? Me Who got and it? And Oh, you and Sora, okay, I'm just making sure that I didn't have All right, uh, where did I put it? I put it, it's in features. Use. Mm. 13. Um, well, let's see, their touch AC is pretty bad, but I don't know if that's going to hit. All right. Yeah, that won't quite hit its touch AC. All right. But you still have the charge. All right, uh, Rosalina. So I totally forgot I can do this, but I'm going to split my hex, and I'm going to uh, oh, misfortune yeah, both of them. Yeah. That's oh, some shit. good action economy. Apparently my DCs aren't set up for that. Uh, DC... Does the split hex change any of that? How does split hex actually work? It, it just doesn't. Puts them on both? Yeah. Okay. They cool. have to be 30 feet within each other. That's Okay, it. and I, I think it can't be like the higher Majors level hexes, right? or, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so will saves for both of them. Their will saves are not great. Uh, I think well, one of them made yeah, it one and it failed. Save. Yeah, and that's for two rounds, and I'll cackle and make it three. I'm going to hide behind Pilbo. Okay. So one of them has misfortune on it now. All right, Silric. Um, an attempt to slap the water. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, punch it. Punch and kick it. Come to the misfortune one. Okay. Uh, oh. Let me see. Does the one over here have combat reflexes? 
does not. Okay. And this guy, the other guy has not gone yet. So, all right, you're next to the misfortune one now. And no attacks come at you. All right, there's a one, so that one does obviously is not going to hit, but 35 hits, 31 hits, so two attacks are going to hit. Um, just like what Jace discovered earlier, the you feel like it's you know it's hard to punch water. It turns out, and not all your damage is going to go through, but some of it does still. Hit the full and then refund some of his health. Okay. Um. All right. So you hit him with a couple attacks, though. Um. Water still intact, though. It's going to go now. Um. It's going to attempt to attack Silric back since Silric attacked it, and it's in range. Um. See if the misfortune works automatically so if I roll from the sheet here. It looks like it probably did. Maybe not. Oh. I don't think it did it correctly though. It didn't roll oh. the, it didn't roll the attack twice for, for misfortune. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a way to set it up to do that. I'll look at it. Let's see. All right, so it theoretically, but I gotta reroll those attacks. So let's uh, let's go with that first one first. Let's see the double nat twenty. Okay, it looks like it is gonna hit with that attack because it rolled a nineteen, but it's not gonna get the critical. So <laughs> you're not gonna take literally a hundred damage. <laughs> um, and then the other one, the eighteen. That's going to turn into a 7, so then it will be a, a lot lower as well. Um, what would a 7 plus 19 be? 26? I think 26 is going to miss Silric. It should have 31 AC. Okay, so you just get hit one for one attack, uh, just for 28 damage. Apparently applying damage. Script changes are disabled in this world. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, uh, it looks like it applied it correctly still, though, but. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yep. Misfortune saving you from a lot of damage. I think that Misfortune literally prevented 100 in like four damage or something there well yeah because it crit right because <laughs> it crit and it's turned the second slam into a miss Damn, okay that was a high crit <laughs> yeah <laughs> double <laughs> double nat 20s good lord i used to have a house rule that if you rolled double nat 20s like that you gotta do a third confirmation roll and if you just confirmed on the third one it was just an outright kill oh man not using that in this game, but yeah, it's a house rule I've used in the past. Uh, Togbad is gonna go. He uh, he's gonna see this going on. He's gonna he's gonna come running in with the Morning Star. He's gonna try to he's gonna try to help. All he's, right. He's gonna do a single attack with the Morning Star. He misses. I don't think Togbad's hit a single attack. It's a rough life being Togbad. Okay. But that, that's his turn. Maybe we should have named him Toggood. <laughs> Maybe. At least he's not Tog worse. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Umbrellas. Uh, mm. Don't really want to go near these things. I could throw another bomb, which that might be the best thing to do here for just damage sake. I'll move up here, and I'm going to toss a bomb into like this square right here so that, yeah, 
right here so there's five feet that doesn't touch okay. anything except the thing. You don't have a precise shot, do you? I don't, but okay. it is worth touch. Though. For, yeah, touch. Yep. It's a nineteen touch it. Yep, that'll that'll touch it. Alright, take thirty three fire damage. And it's elemental damage, so it doesn't care about DR. Okay. That's my turn. All right, uh, this elemental up here. Hmm, we're going to have it 50-50 roll here if it goes for or a coin flip. One, it goes for Tog Bad. Two, it goes for Pilbo. It's going to go for Pilbo. That might be the better choice for us. Pilbo's hard to hit. Yeah, but how am I supposed to make a skeleton out of Togbad? Togbad actually has a pretty high AC too. He's got uh, because he's got Jubix he's armor. He's got all the gear and shield. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I do want him to be protected. I don't want him to just die. Yeah, that'd be awful. <laughs> Togbad's so lovable. Like, how can you? How can you? Not until him? I get you know leadership and give him class levels. Oh man. <laughs> All right, so it's going to do two attacks. He'll, he'll become a, a hill giant paladin. I think those both miss, though. So. Paladin? Of what god? Uh, Jace. Of the hill giant uh, god Jace Mama. Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to full round the one I can see easily. One that you don't have cover verse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any special spell I want to use? Um. No, I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. Although I kind of want to use my new spell. I'll use it later. Okay. So let's do an acid splash full round action. Uh, we'll click the boots of haste. I've sure. been forgetting to do that. I think you thought you were out of uses of it too, because you didn't realize we'd rested. Yes, I thought that earlier. Um, do I want? I'll move. Yeah, I'll move here. It'll be fine. Full uh, round. Okay, this elemental is going to take an attack opportunity. Oh, can he? I don't have cover. Uh, nope. Oh, can I not move there? Sure, I'll let you. I'll let you undo it, I guess. I'll be I, I didn't realize that he, like, I thought I melee either attacks he could do from or he couldn't reach square, me, so he could do it from like here. I see. No I cover. see. Okay. Um, I rolled low, but the haste attack got chance for crit. Probably uh, the elemental. It's an elemental, so it's immune to crits. Dang it. Um, but you do hit with three attacks, and you have clustered shots, so, I mean, you got that going for you. True. Well, the 20 will also hit, so. All right, let's see here. See if you take out the elemental. I think you're going to. Clustered shots is coming in clutch in this fight, I think. Yeah, this is what you take it for. Yes. Or, like, DR epic. Okay, yeah, that's enough to take out the elemental. Yay! And then afterwards, I'll five foot step. How about down there? Oops, that's the wrong elemental. <laughs> it's uh, this one. Okay. Yay! Um, Pilbo, still have a charge of Visions of Madness. I'm gonna use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Boots of Haste, 9 out of 10. We did it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Not been good for me today. No. Alright, uh, well, you still have the charge, I guess. Uh, do you move anywhere? No. I'm okay. not going in that water. Uh, Rosalina. 
Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. So that one's dead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I guess I'll just retribution. Well. Hmm. I don't know if it's gonna die or not. The it hasn't forward. taken any damage yet. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'll retribution it. Okay. Um, that's a will save again, so... Yeah. Which I'm not even sure if that hex is in the Comunium or whatever. Well, looks like it failed. I have lost connection to the server. Uh oh. That oh, doesn't well. sound good. Yeah, I tried to open the compendium and I don't know. All hell broke loose. What happened to Pluto? I don't know. I wonder if everything's exploding on his end. Oh no. Uh oh. Maybe that's why he GC didn't know this thing. It's probably gonna boot us because he's the host. Mm hmm. Through. Well, GG, game over. <laughs> yeah, good game, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> Pluto is typing in the Discord. Yeah, I can't even move my character, so I think it's on his end. He's back. Can you hear me? Oh, he's on his phone. Hi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The last thing I heard was uh, Secret saying, I've lost connection to the server, and then then everything disconnected on my end. They're like, I hit me. I even tried saying that. I don't know. If, I don't think you guys heard me though. No, no. We didn't hear. guys. Because I also tried doing a search on Google and it said it couldn't connect to Google. So yeah, my internet is just down right now. So I think we're just gonna have to end it here. We'll have to finish this combat uh, next time. Okay. Okay. I don't okay. Know it's gonna come back up. It's fun. Good no night, worries. <laughs> so yeah, sorry about the abrupt end, but yeah. <laughs> We'll, uh, no we'll... problem. I don't think this combat will last too much longer because I already took out one of them, but yeah. So, yeah. Okay, Sorry about okay. this. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.